I have a simpler AA perm, like T perm, but the R's are double layered. This is game changing. This is brand new information. So of course, a lot of people have discovered this algorithm before. You just play around with your algorithms you already know, and you come up with this by accident. Here, I can do it too. This is a Y perm. If you do four moves, you can set it up into a J perm, which is a nicer algorithm than a Y perm. Compared to the standard Y perm, mine is only two moves longer, but it saves you from having to regrip in the beginning. Two moves versus a regrip seems like it might be good. So I have the standard Y perm, and this time includes the regrip and my new awesome Y perm. <sighs> of course, I failed again. People learning A perm for the first time see the X rotation and see the D2 moves. And those together make it look like a bad algorithm where a T perm is something you know is a good algorithm. So today we'll be talking about how you can tell if an algorithm is good. I've developed a formula where you can plug in a few things about the algorithm and it will tell you how good this algorithm is. And you can use that as a rough guideline to compare different algorithms. So before we get into that, you have to make sure you're plugging the right things into the formula. So we're gonna go through some of the things that you have to know. The first important thing is move count. Two common ways of counting moves are HTM or half turn metric and QTM or quarter turn metric. So here I'll do eight quarter turns and now I'll do eight half turns. So it took roughly double the time, which leads me to believe that quarter turns are a better way of judging how long algorithms are. Except that's not really the full story, because here is another sequence of eight half turns. This one was much faster, even though it was a pretty similar sequence, and that's for the next reason. But before getting to that, just to finish off the thought about half turn versus quarter turns, as for right now, which one is a better metric for measuring algorithm speed? They're both kind of good. In fact, what's better than either of these is something more in between, and I'll show you how that works later on. Next is the concept of overworking. So take a look at these two 12 move sequences. Now we'll just change that U prime to a U and try again. So in the first example, I alternated right hand and left hand for the U-turns. In the second example, it was always right hand, which means I have to reset every single time. But if I have to use the same finger again so quickly that I can't make it back without wasting time, then that is overworking a finger and that takes extra time. So before moving forward, let's apply this to two algorithms to see why they're not as fast as we think they might be. One obvious example is HPERM as it's so obvious and only seven moves, but if you look at where it ranks in my PLL speeds, shouldn't it be faster? In half turns, it is only seven moves. But if you count in quarter turns, then this is actually 12 moves. Now, even then, a J perm is 13 moves, and I can still do this faster than the 12 move H perm. So then the reason must be the other factors. So for the H perm, I'm doing M2 here, and then U prime. And during that U prime, I only have that little bit of time to put my fingers back here for another M2. So the fingers I'm using for M2 are being overworked two, maybe three times. And in that case, you can see why something like a U perm would be faster. So here, M2, U prime, then my middle finger actually is already in the right spot to push backwards. I don't really have to reset my fingers here. And then just continuing, there's only one finger reset here after the M prime, and I go into M2 again. The next thing is regrips, and this is a pretty big one, but you have to make sure that you're counting them correctly. So first of all, what is a regrip? It's normally that your thumbs are both on the front, and anytime you change one of them, then that counts as a regrip. That's the most basic kind of regrip. Now there are smaller regrips that may or may not count depending on the situation that I'll explain in a second. And that is, for example, if you're doing lefty turns and you switch to doing righty turns, you have to move your fingers over. And if you're doing like R and U turning and you have to switch to an MU algorithm and you use these two fingers for your M2s, then you're gonna have to switch to either middle or ring finger holding the back into index holding the back. And that switch does take time, maybe almost as much time as a full thumb regrip. So for example, this is an OLL into H perm and I'll have to pause in the middle. This N perm is 17 moves, and this Y perm is also 17 moves. But I can do the Y perm a lot faster than the N perm. One of the main reasons is the N perm has a regrip in the middle, and it actually costs a lot of time. So here's how that N perm would look, and there's actually two regrips in here, but I'll tell you the difference between them. So uh, ignore this first one, I'll talk about that later as well. So right here, after this F, I'm going to regrip my thumb to the bottom when my thumb was here before the F prime, and then switch to the bottom for the F. That's the first regrip. And then continuing, regrip. So the first regrip right here at F prime U prime F, this is what I call a soft regrip. This is because I'm regripping, but I'm doing other moves as that regrip happens, and therefore the regrip doesn't take any time. Then continuing here, I have to use my right hand for this F move. There's not really a nice way unless I do this, which destabilizes the whole cube. So I will do this. 
and then I'll have to regrip because I need my right hand again for R prime. So I need my hand for the move before the regrip and the move after the regrip, which means there's no stopping that regrip from taking time. That's what I call a hard regrip, a regrip where you cannot avoid the time it takes to switch your grip. And therefore it takes at least as much time as a move because one move is less hand movement than avoiding all these layers to switch your grip. Another example of a soft regrip is the one I showed in the T perm in my last video about how to turn faster. I also showed how if you remove that regrip, you don't really make the alg any faster because it is a soft regrip and doesn't take any time. An example of a hard regrip is what I do in this G perm right here. Unless I completely change the way I do this algorithm, with the current way I'm doing the moves, there's no way I can stop that regrip from taking up time. Now, because regrips are a big deal and you usually start PLL with your thumbs on front, then having a regrip to begin an algorithm looks like a bad idea. Now, if you have the way you do PLL very optimized and you tend to be able to recognize from a lot of different angles, then this is less of a problem than you might think. This is because if you're regripping your right hand, you can always just align the top with your left hand. So there's only a 25% chance you actually get it from this angle. If you get it from any other angle, like from here, then instead of doing U regrip into Y perm, you can instead regrip and do you with your other hand at the same time. But generally for a lot of your algorithms, you'll be thinking about how to get rid of regrips and this comes down to finger tricks. For example, the way you'll see me do Jperm in my PLL video, because that's how I used to do it, is by regripping like this to do R U R prime and then F prime like this. And I couldn't do the F prime like this if I began R U R prime this way, the better way, because I didn't like this, I'd have to put my pinky underneath. So now I have eliminated that regrip, but the way I do it is like this into thumb. And while it might look slower, and I thought it would be slower at first, as it turns out, I'm equally fast this way as this way. Another thing I used to do is for this OLL, I would regrip like this to do the U2 with this hand. For some reason, I found this more stable, but you really shouldn't need to do that. You can just do U2 with the other hand instead. So before I get to the formula, let's use all the concepts in this video to fully analyze the A perm versus wide T perm and have a conclusive decision on which one is better. In quarter turns, the regular A perm is 12 moves and the wide T perm is 15 moves. And in half turns, it's nine versus 14, so the regular A perm still wins here. Now for overworking a finger, the A perm never does this, but the T perm does this one time. And lastly, for regrips, the A perm does begin with a regrip, while the T perm does not. So the regular A perm wins in every department except for that one initial regrip, which is not as bad as most hard regrips. So I would say that the A perm definitely wins over the wide T perm. Okay, now if you understand all of the concepts that I use there, then you can look at how this formula works. First, you count the number of moves where a quarter turn is one move, a half turn is one move, a slice turn is one move, and two moves that can be done at the same time is still one move. So you take the number of hard regrips and multiply that by two. Then add 1.5 for every time you overwork a finger. And lastly, add 0.5 for every time you see a half turn. For example, the wide T perm comes out to be 16, while the A perm comes out to be 10.5. So the bigger the number, the longer the algorithm takes to do. Now this is of course assuming you can do D2 as D2 flicks, because if you couldn't, then this number would be different. You'd be overworking your D finger more. Also, if you take the big one and divide by the small one, then you can see what the percentage difference in their times should be. And if we compare it to how well I did with them, it's pretty accurate in this case. So here's another example. We have the standard Y perm versus the setup into J perm that I talked about earlier. And again, if you divide these numbers, you get that the setup to J perm should take about 16% longer. Now for me, it took 30% longer, and this could be because of a few reasons. If we assume the formula is correct, then it could be because I am so much better at Y perm than the setup to J perm, because obviously I've never done that before in my life. But if we assume that I'm equally good at both algorithms, then what that really means is my formula is not perfect. Now, because you shouldn't just blindly trust how this formula works, I've also posted a video that includes all of the data and my method for finding these numbers, as in why are regrips worth two and why is overworking a finger worth 1.5 and so on. So that's linked in the description and you can check it out after the video. But now we're going to talk about something this formula does not take into account, which is risk. For this area in T perm that I talked about where you do U prime, R prime, U prime, instead you can do U prime with your index finger, R prime, U prime with your middle finger. Now this actually completely removes the overworking a finger. However, it does introduce risk into the algorithm because I do find um, this to be riskier when going very fast compared to just using your index finger twice. Now my formula has no way of taking into account risk. It can only take into account how well you can do this algorithm at your best. 
If you think something's risky because there's D2 moves like the eight perm, then just practice your D2 moves. In fact, a lot of the time, something you think is risky might just be you not being good at it. But there are cases where you may run into legitimate risk that is actually just a lot harder than what you could be doing instead. As I've said, the formula may not be totally accurate because I am a little bit lazy and I did not use a large data set when creating this formula. Anyway, definitely go check that out as it's pretty interesting on its own. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time. And stop suggesting the wide T perm as an A perm.